Okay guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, it's definitely not going to be one of my normal kind of videos. We're just going to talk a little bit here. Uh, we're going to talk about Chipageddon. We're all living through it right now. So uh, basically it's the Armageddon of chips. Uh, so this Armageddon of microchips and microprocessors is uh, directly related to COVID-19. Uh, so, so basically what's happened is, you know, manufacturing had slowed down due to various reasons you can't get the silicon or can't get the dyes or you don't have the employees at work to do it due to COVID-19. So there's been a ton of logistical issues uh, in the microcontroller world of manufacturing and re really pretty much any semiconductor kind of stuff. Uh, so if, if anybody's been, you know, following the news at all in the technology world, you would you would know this is going on. Uh, so I'm going to talk about kind of the hobbyist level of it because uh, I've run into it now being a problem. I hadn't run into it being a problem yet, so I hadn't done a video uh, until today. So today I was working on and planning on doing a video of uh, basically using uh, KiCad to design my, uh, here, I'll just pick it up, to, to basically take this project and put it onto an actual circuit board so that way the STM32 open source gauge pod could become a circuit board and we could move forward with it and as I was trying to do my design I was checking to make sure parts were in stock that I was going to use and I was like oh you know chip again is going on so let me just check if the STM32s are available uh, which you know normally I would never have to think about is an STM32 available most suppliers have 20 30,000 of them on on hand at any time so it's never never an issue uh but you know i was like hey i, I know this is going on let me check and i was like oh my god they're not in stock so then i was like well uh let's just check because i just because i had them i was like let's check the arduino uh, well not the arduino the um the avr chips and see if they're in stock because I have some. Um, I don't need them, but I have them. Uh, so I was just like, okay, let's look at that. And nope, they, they weren't in stock either. So it's it's now at the level of where it's affecting, you know, us hobbyists or, you know, you engineers who are designing stuff at home, stuff like that. Um, it's, that's what, this, this whole time I've been following it, I've been like, oh yeah, the auto manufacturers can't get these, you know, specialty chips that they, they custom order and, you know, uh, Sony can't get their custom order chips for their Playstations and, and, and all this other stuff. So there's like tons of supply chain issues with all these big companies making stuff. And it's like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come down and affect us because, because the stuff we use, it's just in such high volumes. It's just you know, no way it's all going to sell out. The, the amp hour they were talking about, uh, they actually had an episode called Chipageddon, uh, and they, they were talking about how, you know, these engineering firms that design stuff around these products, they, they have, you know, their own stockpiles that they keep on stock, and basically they're, they're um, well, what I'll, I'm just calling their quartermaster, they, you know, their guy that's in charge of keeping stuff in stock, uh, it's just going to buy way too many of these things now because they're, they're going to have a knee-jerk reaction to this news of, hey, stuff's out of stock, so let's buy it, just like everybody in their toilet paper. You know, you know, your grandma had 30 fucking cases of toilet paper in her house because she's like, I'm never going to be able to go to the store again. COVID-19, I can't go to the store, uh, so let me buy all the toilet paper. Uh, either that or people weren't wiping their ass before and then when COVID-19 happened, they started buying toilet paper. I don't know. I don't know what caused the toilet paper craze. Uh, but yeah, now we're now we're facing that in microchips. So basically, uh, there's a shortage of microchips. And then now all of these engineering firms and stuff like that, that, you know, they, they're designing or they, they make a product also, you know, uh, manufacturers that make a product. They're going to buy... 10 times what they normally would just so that way they don't suffer that shortage and they're they're hoarding more chips which is just making it worse for everybody else um now i don't have any you know news articles or anything i could post to to say hey look see look at these firms buying way more than they need to uh but it's just kind of stuff they, they were talking about oh yeah yeah this is gonna happen so i, I believe it I, i'm pretty sure that is what's happening here because we're looking at you know chips that are just kept at it, it just absolutely insane uh rates of being in stock from these different distributors like mauser and newark and digikey and, and there's just none of them there's there's not a single one uh, available for for purchase so now let's talk about 
the four main things that really are causing this whole chip shortage in the first place. So the first thing is uh, it, probably the most impactful thing on here is there's just an absolutely huge surge in electronic sales right now. So PC sales are up 5% from last year, which may not sound like a lot, but that's that's a huge jump there in, in any market. Anybody, anybody that sells anything would be excited for a 5% jump in sales. So yeah, PC sales skyrocketing. Not surprising either because we have COVID-19 happening and everybody's on Zoom and they need a better computer to telework from home. And on top of that, we have new computer technology coming out from Apple with the new M1 chips that are RISC-V based, so uh, which bring a cheaper product to the market for them. So not a surprise that you know all your Apple fanboys are out buying their new Apple products. Uh, and then we have new devices that, again, are just driving sales. We have the, the PlayStation 5 stuff coming out uh, and the new Xboxes where, you know, that's that's just another huge demand there from, from a market of people that, you know, they, they have to have the latest and greatest thing for, for their gaming going on. And then um, we also have the rollout of 5G, which brings a whole bunch of new back-end stuff that you need. You, need, you know, you need antennas, you need the, uh, which, you know, the antennas have more going on than just being an antenna. Uh, and then you, you have the, the routers and everything else that, that's just required for the back-end of 5G. Plus, you have the new 5G cell phones, which is going to, you know, more cell phones means you know, more more uh, chips that are, that, that are going to go out. Uh, and, and then the fabs were already, you know, before all this happened last year, fabs were already just running at, at complete capacity. They, they couldn't put out more than they were already putting out. Uh, so, so like right now is the time to be the guys that make the equipment for, for foundries and fabs that make uh, microcontrollers and, and other semiconductors. So, so yeah, if you're in that business, man, you're going to make a lot of money this year. And if you owned stocks in them before this, you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, th those stocks are just, just you know, they, they're to the moon, as, as Reddit would say. Uh, so then the next the next big issue that, that really led to this is, is a business shift to having uh, more – outsourcing your fabs and outsourcing your foundries so uh you know st microelectronics i'm just using them as an example doesn't mean they, they are in this boat but may not actually have their foundries a lot of a lot of the the main manufacturers no longer actually have their own fabs and foundries to, to manufacture stuff they outsource it to uh to companies like esmic in china um and, and then there's other companies in korea and stuff that do this too so so yeah there's just been this huge shift of of just outsourcing the manufacturing of their own chips, uh, they're starting to trust other companies more with NDAs and stuff like that. So they're, they're you know less less worried about their IP getting out, which just led to that shift of you know okay let's just not run our own foundry. So so decentralized manufacturing has made this a possibility, uh, you know, because if you had more foundries running, you, you could keep up with it in theory, or at least you could ramp production uh, faster. Uh, so then a, another major uh, cause of this, which I've already mentioned their name uh, before, is so Trump's trade war uh, is really what we're going to label this. And I'm not saying this is like, oh, this big liberal conspiracy of hating Trump, but just he, he really drove that trade war with China and really, really pushed it. So it, it, it really is his trade war. Um, so he uh, put huge limits on ordering from ESMIC in China, which ESMIC uh, is a, they're a foundry in China. They, they, the reason his, his kind of focus on doing that is ESMIC produces all of these um, components for the Chinese military and stuff. So he says they're a, they're a threat to our national security. We, we can't be doing that. And also, you know, they, they go, they're the ones putting the spy chips and everything and, and all this other crap. Um, so uh, I, I, I get, you know, wanting to protect national interests and stuff, but that just has led to this crisis. Um, and 
the, this trade war led to panic buying before COVID-19 was even a thing. So panic buying was already going on in the industry. You know, co companies were just like, oh, God, uh, you know, mass mic manufacturers are fab. Well, you know, they're, they're our fab. We got to order as many chips as we can before these laws go into effect. So there was already panic buying going in effect we, and also like going like, oh, God, we got to switch foundries and, and, and get stuff moved to other companies. And, and so that, that led to problems. And then uh, – Economic panic is really our last uh, major cause for, for this um, chip shortage. So uh, auto manufacturers and, and other manufacturers, they canceled their orders because they thought they weren't going to have sales. They are like, uh, you know, nobody's going to be buying anything. You know, these, uh, these PlayStation 5s aren't going to sell that well or whatever. You know, they, they were, they were full-on preparing for, you know, an economic crash due to COVID-19. So they canceled orders with these fabs going on. We're, we're just absolutely not going to need these. There's, there's no reason to order them. Uh, so, so your canceled order gets moved to the back line. And go, okay, you don't want to order for this? Well, we're moving on to the next order and then then everything happened and they're like oh we need we need this stuff you know put us put us back in the queue put us back where we're at they're like no 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 fam you, you go into the back of the line because you canceled your order uh so yeah it's 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 really pushing this stuff out you know these auto manufacturers they're trying to sell you know thirty forty thousand dollar car and they can't sell it because it's missing one component you know you got a 10 cent chip missing they, they they can't just redesign the circuit board for another chip uh especially auto manufacturers are always years and years behind on their technology. So most of these chips are like, you know, not recommended for new design or are completely obsoleted and they're custom ordering them from the fabs. And that's like the only place there's, they, they can't, they can't turn to other, ma uh, not manufacturers, but, um, uh, resellers that would have had stockpiles of these chips because I mean, it's an obsolete chip. You're the, you're the only person buying it. Um, and yeah, and then there were just tons of firms just not placing orders in the first place. And they weren't just canceling orders, just orders weren't getting placed in the first place. They're, eh, we're, we're not going to need it. You know, you know, the, the Mauser's like, oh, we're not going to need as many of these. I, I, I'm not saying that Mauser didn't, didn't order, but uh, you know, just using that as an example, they're a company that came to mind. So, you know, companies were not ordering uh, in the first place, let alone people that had already ordered canceling their orders because they're like, oh, God, you know, and everyone's like, it's going to be, you know, the 1920s are going to be just like the the, 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 the 2020s are going to be just like the 1920s. We're going to go into another recession here. So, uh, yeah, those, those are really our, our main causes of um, this this chip shortage. So let's let's go take a look at some of the stuff uh, that I'm trying to order, and then after we take a look at that, we'll talk about kind of things that you and I can do uh, on our end to to hopefully uh, help mitigate what's going on here. Okay, so here we're just gonna look at the STM uh, 32F. 103C86, which is the microcontroller I need. Um, it just we'll take a look and just show you they're, they're just not in stock. So uh, Newark Electronics doesn't have any of them, uh, and they say that they should be back in stock for for 22. <laughs> so next year, next year we should have them available. And then we come over to DigiKey. It just says out of stock. Doesn't say when they're gonna have them in stock. We go to uh, Mauser, and they also say, you know, 11,000 of them on order. Doesn't say when they're showing up. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're just not in stock. This is a chip I need. Now, uh, what I'm going to try to do is source the, uh, what is this, the CKS32F. One six. It's a it's it's a Chinese clone of the chip. It's supposed to be a chip for chip uh, clone of it. Uh, I I've already tested. I have I have one right here. Uh, the other one has the STM32 on it. I've already tested it with this and it works. So I'm not going to have any issues going with the clone chip. So that's what I'm trying to do right now is uh, source the clone chips from China uh, instead of just working with a genuine chip on this very first revision of the product. So I, I need to make at least one and test it and make sure it works. Uh, and, and I've already used these clone chips before. I know I know they do work. So that's my solution to it is, you know, hopefully uh, this uh, manufacturer in China actually has some in stock that I can order because they're kind of like, you know, who the hell wants to buy an off-brand chip? Uh, so... That's that, and then we can look at the Atmega 328AU is also 
not in stock at all. Um, you go, you see, they got 13,000 of them on order. Um, and so this is what I wanted to show here is, you know, the normal price on one of these, $2 for one. You, you get one for $2, and that, that, that's your normal price here. So we have some sellers on eBay selling them, and they are $5 for one, and that's not including shipping. So you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, over ten dollars just to get one of them um and then same with you got eight dollars with free shipping and this is not going to be a genuine one this this is going to be a clone out of china so we're already seeing some price gouging on um on the chips here so uh just i have uh how many do i have i'm not actually sure how many i have i have some in stock and i don't i don't need them seven of them so if anyone needs them and they have STM 32s, I'll trade you. I'll trade you two for one, because uh, two of these is about the same price as one of those. So I'll give you two of these for one of the STM 32 chips. Okay, so what can you and I do to help mitigate what's going on here? Well, first, if you have stockpiles of stuff like this, you know, try to get it, get rid of it, sell it on eBay or something. Like, don't price gouge, but just you know, sell it where you get a little bit of profit. So that way, that way somebody else that is trying to design a product can get with it. Or, you know, hey, I need STM32s and I have these AVR chips. I'll trade two because like two of these cost the same as one of those. So I'll trade two, two AVRs for one um, STM32. And I absolutely would. If somebody has the, the STM32s I'm looking for, comment down below. Let me know. I would absolutely trade for them. Um, and, or I would just buy some from you, e either way. Uh, and then uh, the, the other thing that, that, you know, you and I could do is if, if you're looking at buying and investing in stocks, invest in the foundries, you know, and invest in the companies that manufacture the equipment for foundries. Because first of all, you're going to make money. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, this isn't investment advice. I'm not an insider trading here or anything. I'm just saying those, those companies are going to make a lot of money because, um, because, we, we can take, um, I can't remember the name of the foundry. There's a huge foundry in, in uh, Korea. It's one of, the, one of the world's largest foundries. They've committed to spending $28 billion this year to ramp up production and, and buy new equipment to be able to manufacture more, which is really funny because the U.S. government is saying, you know, we're going to invest, you know, like $30 billion or $40 billion, something like that, uh, to, to help mitigate this. And it's like, that's a that's like a drop in the bucket. There's one company spending that kind of money right now. There's you know one foundry by itself is already spending that kind of money. So and and there's you know tens of of foundries in the world. You know they, there's there's not just the one. They're they're all gonna need to spend money. And we don't have a lot of them here in the United States. Um, most of the big foundries are, are just not here in the United States. So I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do trying to eh, do it here. Um, and then uh, the 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 next thing you know you and I can do is not hoard chips. Don't you know? Don't go panic buying them. It's it, this is gonna blow over the same way the the toilet paper shortage blew over. It, and it, it might take longer, you know, it's looking like it's going to be 2022 by the time it ends. And I mean, that's not surprising. It takes time to ramp up manufacturing of silicon. You can, you can ramp up paper production a whole lot faster than you can ramp up uh, silicon manufacturing. So, you know, it's not surprising, but we just look at it. Hey, it's going to, going to take a year there. So uh, maybe, maybe work on, if you have projects you're trying to do at home, Work on some analog design. Work on, you know, getting better at making a power supply or something like that. <laughs> it doesn't require a microcontroller. Um, so, you know, just, just kind of thought there. Of, you know, there's not a whole lot you and I can do from home is pretty much what I have to say there is, is if you have stuff, sell it if you don't need it. Uh, invest in companies that run fabs and foundries and don't panic buy. That's, that's really all what you and I can do from home. Um, you know, bigger, we could, we could look to like ST microelectronics or microchip or, you know, Infineon and be like, Hey, you guys need to make foundries and stuff like that. You know, th those, those players can do a whole lot more about this. They could, you know, open back up their foundries they've closed or whatever, and, and try to try to ramp production. 
uh, there, and that that could be a potential solution. But that's just not something you know you and I can do. We we can't do that as a hobbyist or even as a, a low level engineer or something like that. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really all is what I had to say on this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully you learned something, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.